So this is my daughter's junior soccer ball. So she's six year old, she plays youth soccer. Uh, this soccer ball weighs about three quarters of a pound. So you might ask yourself, how can something that's so kind of light and springy uh, be dangerous or cause what we might term a head trauma? To answer that question, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of data here. So we're going to take that data. I'm going to drop a soccer ball from just under my chin. I'm about six feet tall. Uh, so this will be a fall of about four or five feet uh, to something that's very similar to a bathroom scale. But this bathroom scale has a connection uh, to our computer. So it's going to take data as the ball impacts the scale. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do this and release. And the data that you're going to see here is going to show that the force of impact of that soccer ball on this scale from just dropped from my chin height reaches a maximum at around 100 pounds of force from a three quarters pound ball. In falling from my chin to the ground, calculations from high school physics will tell you that gravity takes about half a second to take the ball from my chin to the ground. That's going to cause the ball to reach a speed of about 12 miles per hour. So it's going to hit the scale going at a speed of 12 miles per hour, and it takes a half a second for gravity to achieve that speed. But when the ball actually hits the scale, as you can see from the data that I showed you a minute ago, the duration of that impact is only 0.01 seconds, or about 10 milliseconds. That's about 50 times less time for the scale to stop the ball, then gravity had to speed it up. And what physics tells us is that the amount of force that's provided to get from 0 to 12 miles per hour in half a second will then be 50 times less than the amount of force that's needed to stop a soccer ball going 12 miles per hour in 10 milliseconds, because it's 50 times less time. So what that means is we take our three quarters pound ball, and we have to multiply that weight by about 50 times to find the force that the scale is exerting. And 50 times three quarters is about 40 pounds. So the average force that's experienced by the ball as it hits the scale, or by the scale as the ball hits it, is about 40 pounds. The peak force is about 100 pounds. So if that ball were to hit your head going 12 miles per hour, what would happen to your head? Your head weighs about 10 pounds on average. So if a soccer ball hits your head with a force of 100 pounds, your head is going to rebound from the ball. The amount of rebound is usually termed an acceleration and given as a ratio to the acceleration of gravity. So usually we would say that that acceleration would be about 10 times gravity, 10 Gs. We get that by taking the 100 pound force of the ball and dividing by the 10 pound weight of your head. So 100 divided by 10, is 10, 10 times G, 10 Gs of acceleration. That's a figure of merit that's used by scientists in studying head impacts. So the amount of acceleration that a player's head will experience when hit by a soccer ball is one important piece of data that scientists use when considering the severity of a head impact. In 2015, a study by the University of Purdue in Indiana found that female soccer players at the collegiate level can experience head accelerations ranging up to 100 Gs. So we talked about 10 Gs from a ball dropped just from my chin to the ground. These players are experiencing head accelerations that peak at about 100 Gs because, of course, they're heading balls that are kicked by female collegiate soccer players that are traveling 40 50 miles per hour.